I agree with the principles that Jesus advocated. Um, and th that the, you know, there's some, some, there's great wisdom in what, in, in the te teachings of, of Jesus. Uh, and I agree with those teachings. Um, and things like turn the other cheek are, are very important because as opposed to an eye for an eye. Um, an eye for an eye leads everyone blind. So forgiveness, you know, is important and um, treating people as you would wish to be treated. Love thy neighbor as thyself. Very important. So it's like a 60, 70% as, yes. <laughs> as Einstein would say, I believe in the God of Spinoza. Um, so, um, but hey, if, um, you know, if, if, if Jesus is, is uh, saving people, I mean, I, I, I wouldn't stand in his way. And I'm like, that'll be true. I'll be saved. Why not? Sweet. You did it? Yeah. I think you just said yes. We got him. Right. <laughs> we got him. <laughs> we got him. <laughs> we got him. <laughs> we got him. <laughs> 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 But hey, if Jesus is saving people, I won't stand in his way. I'm not against God. I'm not against Jesus. <laughs> I hope he's true. I'll be saved, sure. Why not? Yeah. Always wanted to get it saved. Sounds good. And those, those, those filth, filth Christians. <laughs> oh, wow. What you just saw, dear friend, and I'm sorry to subject you to that, but that, that's absolutely perfect. Perfect for what we're going to be talking about today. Um, you just saw probably one of the most grotesque examples of this vile, aberrant, Easy believism that you, you'll, I, I mean, come on, Elon Musk. <laughs> oh, sure, what, what did he say? Always wanted to get it saved. Sounds good. <laughs> yeah. And, and, you know, guys like that uh, Jordan Peterson, you know, the thumbnail there. Yeah, yeah. He, he um, uh, apparently on that, that, um, that bald, crazy guy, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Joe Rogan, he uh, actually gave, and I watched it, uh, not the whole thing, just a clip of it, of how Jordan Peterson um, gave a rundown on the crucifixion. And what he said, what he said about the crucifixion itself and what entailed most of it, he was absolutely correct. He was absolutely correct. But see... There, there are, when it comes to who Jesus is, God the Father. Most people are influenced, unfortunately, probably about uh, 8 out of 10 people that you will meet um, who have heard of Jesus or anything. Uh, most uh, will are influenced, unbeknownst, by Catholicism. So Jesus is one of three gods, and he's the middle one, right? Not, uh, not as powerful as the Father, right? Right. And that, there's always that thing about that pesky resurrection. <laughs> there's always that little thing with people like uh, Elon Musk, Jordan Peterson, and the uh, quintessential Jew. Ben Shapiro, who, who teaches morality. The, you know, Elon Musk, Jordan Peterson, and Ben Shapiro. Those guys are brilliant in their minds. They have brilliant minds. Yes, they do. And they're all about it. You, you saw that. Elon Musk, you know, turn the other cheek. An eye for an eye uh, leaves everybody blind. Oh, doesn't he sound so moral? Doesn't he? Doesn't he sound like he have good ethics, huh? Yeah. But see, and a brother mentioned this to me. Um, 
what these people are doing are taking what the Lord said, what the Lord shoot us of himself, what the Lord shoes us in scripture, and what these people are trying to do are they're trying to take these things and take God away from what he has said. Trying to remove God what he, from what he has commanded. Absolutely. That's what they're doing. They are trying to have these good morals apart from the actual living God, our Father, Jesus Christ. And if you ask any one of them, maybe with the exception of Ben Shapiro, you had, you know, Jordan Peterson, he, he, he's a Christian. And there are people out there I'm not joking. This isn't funny. But there are people out there, when they see that video that we saw, you know, that little clip there about that putz Elon Musk, there are these Christians out there who would actually say to you, he's saved. Are you mad? Are you mad? Mad is insanity. Are you mad? You really, you must be. You think that guy's saved? Yeah, well, and, and those, like I said, those disgusting Christians sitting there. What is it, about 60, 70? Shut up. And people are like, well, Jordan Peterson. He, he's a Christian. He's, no, he's not. Ben Shapiro. But see, what these guys are doing, like I said, they're trying, they're taking what they agree with, the morality. You heard what Elon Musk said. And they're trying to take away from what God said without having God within it. Kind of like what, uh, uh, what was it, Thomas Jefferson? You know, who did his infamous Jefferson Bible, where he took everything that he agreed with. Uh, Thomas Jefferson, he wasn't against God. He wasn't against Jesus. But then again, when it comes to the miraculous, you know what it boils down to, especially for that Elon Putz and Jordan Peterson and, of course, the quintessential Jew, um, uh, Ben Shapiro? There's that thing about that resurrection. There's that thing about that resurrection. There's that thing about the miraculous. Jesus Christ is God, the Father. Okay? He is God. All right? And you can't go to God in your self-righteousness and expect him to save you. But see, like I said, what we saw there was just the most blatant, grotesque, Example of easy believism. And there are some easy believism heretics out there, uh, devils who would even look at that and be like, oh, okay, yeah, now that's that, even that. <laughs> I mean, come on, that's pretty bad. That's pretty bad. But see, what happens? What happens? Please get your authorized version of the scriptures. And please follow me along in the scriptures that we will be looking at today. Follow me along word for word, verse by verse at the scriptures we are going to be looking at. Be a Berean. Search the scriptures daily whether these things be so. Don't just sit there. Follow me along. Okay? Check me out. Make sure I'm not lying to you. Check me out. Make sure I'm telling you the truth. Okay? Check me out. Make sure I'm not skipping a groove. Okay? If you got a question or if something we read, you know, pause the video and read the context and pick the video up again. Okay? All right? Follow me along, please. All right? This video came about by a conversation that uh, my, myself and my best friend, our brother Alexander, had and um, stuck with me. Because we run into these people who... How, you've run into these people, right? It's like, well, I'm not against Jesus. I'm not against God. But... But, 
I'm not, no, no, hey, you want that, that you're, you want to believe in Jesus, you want to, you know, hey, love thy neighbor as thyself, it's for the kingdom of heaven, what, they, they don't know that, it's like, hey, you do, you want, that's good, that, I'm not, hey, if, <laughs> like, what, what, what that guy say? what do Elon Musk say, you know, hey, if Jesus is saving people, I won't stand in his way, I'm not against God, that's, that's good for you. That's, that's not good for me. Oh, so it's subjective. It's subjective. Yeah. See, there it is. There it is. Yea, hath God said. Okay? Yea, hath God said. Absol the authorized version of the scriptures is absolute truth. Absolute truth. It's not subjective. It's objective. Okay? It's objective. Truth is not what, uh, truth is not based upon your perception, okay? Perfect example, okay? You open up a door, and the door hits you in your favorite nose, and you done get blood all over the place. The absolute truth of that is that you open the door and it smacked you in the, uh, in the nose, okay? That's objective, okay? That's what the truth of scripture is. But see, Satan and his church, Roman Catholicism, through the, the Bibles and through all everything else, they have God said. Absolute truth is objective, not subjective. Okay? But Mark chapter 9, Mark chapter 9, verses 38 on to verse 40. Okay? And John answered him, saying, Master, we saw one casting out devils in thy name, and he followeth not us, and we forbade him, because he followeth not us. And this, and this is something that these easy believism scumbags would go to. But Jesus said, Forbid him not, for there is no man which shall do a miracle in my name that can lightly speak evil of me. Do a miracle in my name. For he that is not against us is on our part. Hmm. And of course, what are you thinking of here uh, when, you when we read this? Of course, go to Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7. Okay. Matthew chapter 7. Oh, gee, go figure that one out. Uh, the Sermon on the Mount. What's so significant about that, you may be asking. The Sermon on the Mount is not doctrinally for us today in this dispensation. You read the Sermon on the Mount, like Jordan Peterson and Elon Musk even talking about, um, that's where the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven is all works. There's no faith involved in the kingdom of heaven. Because in the kingdom of heaven, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, is going to be sitting on a throne in Jerusalem, ruling and reigning over the earth. For a thousand years. You don't need faith when you're going to be able to see Jesus Christ on the throne. Okay? You don't need faith. It's all works. Faith is only mentioned on the, in the Sermon on the Mount one time. And it's in the form of a rebuke. Okay? Doctrinally. Doctrine as pertaining unto our salvation for this dispensation today. Doctrinally, the Sermon on the Mount is not for us today. To instruct us in righteousness? Sure. Absolutely. Boop, that's all there. But doctrinally, doctrine is what is pertinent unto the salvation of the person, spirit, soul, and body within the dispensation. Okay? Doctrinally, this does not apply for us today. Okay? All right? But Matthew chapter 7, verses 15 on to verse 23. And a brethren of the Church of the Living God, obviously, um, this video is more directed toward the lost, more rather than yourselves. But let's learn a little bit on how we can deal with and how to approach such matters. Okay? Matthew chapter 7, verses 13 on verse 23. Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many there be which go in thereat. Look at the ecumenical pond scum, a uh, pot of filth that is called Christianity today. Huh? Look at it! 
Look at all the Christians there are today. Look at them all. Look at them. A big old pot of filth. Look at them all. Yeah. But see, our Lord says, straight is the gate. Narrow is the way. Okay. He is the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by him. Well, I believe in Jesus. Which Jesus do you believe in? The, the, the Jesus given to you by Christianity? That's not the Jesus of Scripture. <laughs> but let's continue. Okay? Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. Beware of false prophets, which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly there are ravening wolves. And doesn't Elon Musk and Jordan Peterson and Ben Shapiro it reminds me way too much of that little jerk from Indiana. You know, the... Blah, 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 you know, <laughs> okay? Ye shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Well, what are the fruits of Elon Musk and uh, Jordan Peterson and Ben Shapiro? They teach superior morality and ethics. Apart from the God of Scripture. Uh-uh, Ben Shapiro even talks about Scripture. But he hates Jesus Christ. He would never say, I don't hate Jesus. He's just, he's, he's Jewish, okay? He's an actual Hebrew, okay? Um, he's Jewish. What would he say? That's for you Goyim. Jesus is for you Gentiles. Not for us. He's not our Messiah. Okay, he might be a messiah unto you, but he's not really the messiah. That's what Ben Shapiro would say. Why? Because he's he's Jewish. He's one of those Jews uh, like the Pharisees. Okay, who has rejected his savior, his God, his King. Okay, but those men teach morality. What is the fruit? They're helping people. They're helping them on the way to hell. Because what does it say here? <laughs> For wide is the gate. And broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. Look at the Christians. Look at those Christians in their video, man. Come on now. <laughs> there are people out there who think those guys are saved. <laughs> That's not funny. That's not funny. This is this is the um, the backwash. This is the effect of easy believism. Okay. But their fruit is good, isn't it? Isn't it? Yeah, right. What is good? What is good? Mm. Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit. Again, what is good? That will be in the description box for you. Okay? A good tree cannot bring... Uh, even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit. But a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. Okay? A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit. Neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Well, the, the fruit of the guys like Elon Musk and uh, Ben Shapiro and Jordan Peterson, what about the, the, the fruits of these Christians? Okay? They, they help the homeless. They, they give tithes of all they possess. Right? They, they might even go to Jerusalem and plant a tree or something like that. Right? Oh, and they're spreading the Catholic cheer right now, aren't they? Yeah. They're doing good things. But what is good? What is good? What is good? We're going to look at that. Wherefore, by their fruits ye shall know them. They're doing good things. Yeah. Verse 21, not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. And what is, what is our Father's will? Kiss the Son lest he be angry. What is our Father's will? The time of this ignorance he, uh, God winked up, but now uh, commandeth ev all men everywhere to believe? No, to repent. What are you repenting of? You're repenting of your self-righteousness, of yourself. 
If I were to hold a gun at your head and tell you, you got to stop sinning, you couldn't do it. It's impossible. It's impossible. It's impossible to be sinless on earth today. It's impossible. There is no such thing as sinless perfection. In Jesus Christ, obviously, because he's got the Father. God can't sin, okay? But we as mankind, we sin. There is no such thing as sinless perfection. Watch out for devils who tell you that, yeah, I don't sin anymore, okay? Or you obviously haven't read that. Oh, shut your mouth, okay? Someone comes along and says to you, well, I don't sin anymore. <laughs> right there, it's like, you're a liar. You just lied. That's a sin. Get away from me, okay? Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. Kingdom of heaven is always kingdom of heaven. When you see that in the book of Matthew only. Kingdom of heaven is always a reference onto a physical, literal kingdom, okay? Where a kingdom is of God is more, most of the time, more or less the spiritual kingdom, the spiritual. There are incidences in scripture where kingdom of God is a reference onto the kingdom of heaven, yes, but that is um, that is construed by the context in which it appears. Most of the times, the kingdom of God is a reference onto the spiritual kingdom, not the physical, actual, literal kingdom, which our Lord will establish at his second coming, after the redemption of the purchased possession, and after the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay, when he comes back with us who go up. Okay, so kingdom of heaven is an actual physical, literal kingdom. We're not building kingdoms today. Catholics are. Catholics are building a kingdom. They're building a kingdom for that man of sin, the son of perdition. Okay, and they're celebrating his birthday. Okay, mm-hmm. But, so, when you see kingdom of heaven, realize that it's a physical, literal kingdom. Kingdom of heaven is never a reference onto the spiritual. Okay? Keep that in mind. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils. And in thy name done many wonderful works. Huh. Interesting, isn't that? Because, okay, now go back to Mark chapter 9. Go back to Mark chapter 9, okay? And, okay, let's read that again. Verses 38 on to verse 40. And John answered him, saying, Master, we saw one casting out devils in thy name, and he followeth not us, and we forbade him, because he followeth not us. But as Jesus said, Forbid him not, for there is no man which shall do a miracle in my name that can lightly speak evil of me. For he that is not against us is on our part. Huh. Now go back to Matthew chapter 7. Let's read verse 22 again. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? Verse 23, And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Huh. Huh. So now you might be thinking right off the bat, it's like, well, that, wait a minute. That's a contradiction there, isn't it? Right? That's what you're probably saying. Yeah? Well, that's a contradiction. The New Testament, dear friend. The New Testament begins with the death of the testator. On your own time, pick up the authorized version of the scriptures, not a Bible, the King James Version. Okay? Read Hebrews chapter 9. Okay? Jesus Christ is the mediator of the New Testament. The New Testament begins with the death of the testator, not the birth, okay? Chronologically, as far as the books are concerned, 
the New Testament chronologically, um, you know, canonically, excuse me, canonically, as far as the books. Yes, um, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, okay, they are in the books known uh, as the New Testament. But see, before our Lord and uh, Savior, Jesus Christ, God our Father, died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scripture, the law was still binding. And under the law, it was faith and works, okay? So until the death, burial, and resurrection, till he died on that cross for your sin, and there's that, that thing called that resurrection, okay? The resurrection, because if Christ be not raised, you are still in your sins, and if you are still in your sins, then that means you got to do something to make yourself right. Right? Yeah, yeah. Okay? But before he died, buried, and rose again, third day according to the scriptures, the law was still binding. Okay? The law was still binding. And before he died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures, what was our Lord Jesus Christ doing? He was offering the kingdom, the actual, physical, literal kingdom, onto the Hebraic Jewish people. That's what he was doing. Okay. All right. God knows who you are. God knows everybody. But God does not know everybody through a relationship, a personal relationship with the living God. He knows who you are. You're alive today because he has allowed you to be alive today. You have breath today because he's allowed you to have breath today. He knows precisely whoever you are. He knows who you are. Yes, but he doesn't know you in a personal relationship. Okay? Well, I talk to God all the time. Okay? You do, huh? And, and he's answering your prayers. Who's answering the prayers? The God of the scripture? Hmm? Or the little G God of this world? Hmm? How would you know the difference? See, you read a Bible. The Bible say God is spirit. You read the scriptures. God is a spirit. Distinguishing between, you mean there's another spirit out there? That deceives people? It's scripture call refers to it that spirit of antichrist. And remember, to be antichrist is not to be only against, but to replace. To replace. Good ethics and morals apart from God Himself. But see, like I like I'm telling you, while he was on the earth, before he died, buried, and rose again. Third day, according to the scriptures. He was offering the actual, physical, literal kingdom of heaven unto the Jewish people. Okay? So, when you read here in Mark chapter 9, and also what we looked at in Matthew chapter 7, it's in context of the actual, physical, literal kingdom and Jesus Christ as King, the Son of David. Okay, so when we read in Mark chapter 9, and John answered him saying, Master, we saw one casting out devils in thy name, and he followeth not us. And we forbade him, because he followeth not us. But Jesus said, Forbid him not. For there is no man which shall do a miracle in my name that can lightly speak evil of me. And we just saw in Matthew chapter 7 about these guys like, Well, we did all this stuff in your name, but how did our Lord respond? I never knew you. I never knew you. I didn't have a relationship with you. Hmm? I don't know who you are. For he that is not against us is on our part. Hmm. So this guy here was doing miracles in the name of the Lord because he had a relationship with him of some sorts. Obviously. Obviously. Okay? Obviously, this individual obviously accepted the truth that Jesus Christ is the Messiah. While the others, we did all this stuff in your name. But see, obviously what? Because what we read, broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. 
But narrow is the way that leadeth to life, and few there be that find it. Okay? Those others that are being talked about in Matthew chapter 7, they did all this stuff as a show, as a shoe, like it talks about in Matthew chapter 23, which is describing the time before the time of Jacob's trouble, the spiritual climate before the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? So this, and easy believism, heretics will come to this and say, for he that is not against us is on our part. I'm not against Jesus. I believe in Jesus. So you're saved, and they'll come to this. No, no. This is not for us today. This is not talking about for us today doctrinally. This is in context to the kingdom of heaven. Okay? Because the king was on the earth offering the kingdom. So this guy was doing the name, uh, doing a wonder, a miracle in the name of the king. Okay? So you cannot today come to Mark chapter 9 or Luke chapter 9. And say, well, if he's not against us, then he's for us. And it's from this that so many of these devil heretics, these easy believers and devils, will come and say, hey, they're saved. Everybody's saved. They just believe. They're not against Christ. So if they're not against Christ, so that means they're saved. So according to that, according to that logic, Elon Musk is saved, going to heaven. Ben Shapiro is saved and going to heaven. Jordan Peterson is saved and going to heaven. Marilyn Manson. Brett, you look up a quote from that devil? I'm not against God. I'm against the misuse of God. So, okay, okay, easy believism devil. Okay, like you say, he's not against, uh, he's not against Christ. I'm not against God. He says it himself in a quote. You can find that online. Marilyn Manson. I'm not against God. I'm against the misuse of God. Well, what God is he talking about? But see, the easy believers and heretic weaves, slithers in. So see, hey. And you guys are going to try to tell me that Marilyn Manson is saved? Hey, why not? With that kind of logic, right? Right? See, Mark chapter 9 here is in context to the kingdom of heaven. Um, this does not apply for us today. Okay? Our Lord Jesus Christ did not die, bury, and rise again the third day according to the scriptures in Mark chapter 9. The law was still binding. He was offering the kingdom of heaven unto the Jewish people. Okay? So when he says this, it's in context. It's like, hey, he's promoting the kingdom that I'm offering. Okay? The others that he rebuked, and uh, with and the parable that he gave on the Sermon on the Mount, okay, they like to be seen of men. Okay, they do all these things to be to be glorified of men, not to honor their king. So no, you can't come to this and try to use this for us today in this dispensation. Okay, a dispensation is how God deals with man. God deals differently with man in a dispensation. A dispensation is a, a space where things are, like, for example, the law, the dispensation of the law, which was faith and works. After the death, burial, and resurrection, this dispensation, the time of the Gentiles, which it is by his grace through faith. God never changes, but how God deals with man, that's what changes. Okay? That's what changes. All right? And then people, again, now we've addressed this in other videos, our recent videos, but we're going to hit it again in Romans chapter 2, verses 25 on to verse 29. And people like to go to this and say, well, you know, and we addressed this in the previous video as Jesus made you Jewish, as we have addressed it in several videos, okay? But, for circumcision verily profiteth if thou keepeth the law. But if thou be a breaker of the law, thy, uh, Romans 2, verses 25 on to verse 29. But if thou be a breaker of the law, thy circumcision is made uncircumcision. Therefore, if the uncircumcision keep the righteousness of the law, shall not his uncircumcision be counted for circumcision? And shall not uncircumcision, which is by nature, if it fulfill the law, judge 
thee, who by the letter and circumcision dost transgress the law? For he is not a Jew which is one outwardly, neither is that circumcision which is outward in the flesh, but he is a Jew which is one inwardly, and circumcision is that of the heart, in the spirit, and not in the letter, whose praise is not of men, but of God. And the law was not of faith. Okay? The law was not faith. You didn't need faith to keep the law. Okay? You had faith that the Lord, you had to have faith that the Lord would honor you for keeping the law in the dispensation of the law. Okay? That's what your faith was in God and Him honoring you for doing what He said. You didn't have to have faith in the law because the law told you what, what is what. The law said that's sin. Okay? All right? And people will come to this and say, well, we're all, we're so, why aren't you Jewish? This is talking about the law, the difference between the dispensations. Okay? And note where this is written. This is written in the book of Romans, doctrine for us today. This is after the death, burial, and resurrection. Paul is telling people in Romans chapter 2, verses 24, uh, 25, on to verse 29 here, that you do not need to keep the law today to be saved. That's what he's addressing when you got people uh, like Mark the Messenger, a uh, great example, comes around saying you got to keep the commandments in order to be saved, stay saved, and be right with God. And also you got these people who uh, protest what a Jew is and say, well, anyone who believes is a Jew. <laughs> okay? Paul's talking about the law here. Okay? That's what he's addressing. Okay? And this is also another area where so many of these devils slither in with their yea hath God said to try to justify what is evil. Like I said, we, we talk about this in several other videos. Not going to go off on uh, too deep on that. There'll be videos in the description box for you to go through if you have questions about this. And if you're not going to, if you don't want to hear the truth, I can't help you. Okay? Now go to Ezekiel chapter 16. Ezekiel chapter 16. Ezekiel chapter 16. Verses 15 on verse 27. Now this is under the law. Okay? The law was faith and works. Okay? The uh, eternal security was not there under the law. The Holy Ghost and the Lord is that spirit, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, was not a permanent resident in anyone. He could come and go, come and go, uh, in this dispensation of the law. Once saved, always saved, eternal security sealed until the day of redemption, day of redemption, the catching away of the body of Christ before the time of Jacob's trouble, okay, um, was not there in this dispensation, okay? This is instruction in righteousness, okay? So, Ezekiel chapter 16, verses 15 on verse 27. But thou didst trust in thine own beauty, Oh, I just believe, therefore I'm saved. Are you a sinner? We're all sinners. Did your, you know that you put Jesus on the cross? Uh, no, I didn't. Yes, you did. Your hand held it. No, I, I, I never, what did, what did I do? But you're a sinner, right? It's like, well, yeah, we're all sinners. But your hand Held the hammer to put the... How did my hand hold the... See? See what that is? I believe, personally, that Jeffrey Dahmer got saved and is in heaven. You mean the gay cannibal? The gay cannibal serial killer? You think he's in heaven? And because you just say you believe... <laughs> you think, you think, I think that you're lost? Yes, I do. How dare you? Right? See how that works? See how that works? Why is that? But thou didst trust in thine own beauty. Well, we're all sinners. But did your hand hold the hammer to put the nails in his feet and the nails in his hands? Was it your hands that put the crown of thorns on his head? 
Is it your fault that he died on the cross? Or do you want to hide yourself under the umbrella? We're all sinners. And yes, that is absolute truth. Truth. Yes, we are all sinners. But see, personal accountability and responsibility to God that's what nobody, that's what easy believism doesn't want to address. And that's what guys like Elon Musk, Jordan Peterson, Ben Shapiro, that's what those guys don't want to address, personal accountability. Even though they, they, they preach about it themselves, themselves. No, no personal. They are not the ones who held the hammer. Jesus Christ didn't die for their personal sins. But everybody else. And hey, I'm part of that too. Like Elon Musk. Hey, you know, uh, I hope he's true. If he's saving people, I'm not going to stand in his way. Hey, we're all sinners, right? But thou didst trust in thine own beauty and played us the harlot. Because of thy renown, and pourest out thy fornication on every one that passed by, his it was. And guys like Jordan Peterson will give, you know, he, he apparently, he, I guess he thinks he's a Christian, or people are calling him a Christian. Of course, the easy believers of devils. But yet, he's like, well, there's good things in the Quran. I'm not, and these same guys are like, I'm, I'm not against Allah. Uh, Allah is, is of Satan, okay? <laughs> Allah is the fish god, uh, the moon god, or whatever, okay? But these guys are like, I'm not against Allah. There are good teachings in the Quran. I'm not against God. I'm not against Jesus. See how this works? You see how this works? You're trying to have God apart from God himself. Who did that? Ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Hmm. But thou didst trust in thine own beauty, and playedest the harlot because of thy renown, and poredest out thy fornication on every one that passed by, his it was. And, you know, you see a lot of this. It's like trying to incorporate all these other things into your faith. And Jesus Christ, he is the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by him. Straight is the way and narrow. Narrow. Well, it is broad that leadeth to destruction. Talking about, uh, and poorest out thy fornications on everyone that passed by. The harlotry that Christianity is. Okay? And of thy garments thou didst take, and deckest thy, thy high places with divers colors, and playedest the harlot thereupon. The like thing shall not come, neither shall it be so. Thou hast also taken thy fair jewels of my gold and of my silver, which I had given thee, and madest to thyself images of men, and didst commit whoredom with them. Oh, Committing a whoredom with the Roman Catholic Church, huh? Abusing the things that the Lord has given you. You have, you lost people, you have life today. You have breath today. What are you going to do with it? Hmm? Uh, hold your place here and go to Luke chapter 16. Hold your place here and go to Luke chapter 16. Luke chapter 16, verses 10 on to verse 13. He that is faithful in that which is least is faithful also in much. And he that is unjust in the least is unjust also in much. If therefore ye have not been faithful in the unrighteous mammon, currency, money, mammon was also a deity, okay? Who will commit to your trust the true riches? Hmm. Unrighteous mammon. And if ye have not been faithful in that which is another man's, who shall give you that which is your own? And guys like Elon Musk, uh, Jordan Peterson, um, Ben Shapiro, also guys like Tony Robbins, they're, they're really good with 
mammon. Well, what's their problem? No servant can serve two masters. <laughs> For either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. Ye cannot serve God and mammon. And what does Paul say? One moment, please. Sorry about that. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Verses 20 on to verse 22. But I say that the things with the, which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils and not to God. And I would not that ye should have fellowship with devils. Ye cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. Ye cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and of the table of devils. Do we provoke the Lord to jealousy? Are we stronger than he? And we got to read 23. All things are lawful for me. Yes, you have the ability to go and do whatever you want to do. Yes, you do. Even of the church of the living God. Because God wants you to make the right choices. He's not pointing a gun at your head, forcing you to obey him. He's not. You have, Yes, all things are lawful for you. But all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but all things that if I not. Look at verse 21. Ye cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. Ye cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and the table of devils. You can't have it both ways, friend. You can't serve two masters. You're either going to love the one or hate the other, or hate the one and love the other. Okay? You can't have it both ways. You can't have your cake and eat it too. Oh, but... There are, they, all things are lawful for you. But you see, you're going to reap a heavy consequence for that. Okay? See, and that's what Satanism, and that's what easy believism, which is Satanism, uh, Roman Catholicism, everything of the devil himself that he has promoted over these thousands of years is gray. See, with our Lord, it's black or white. And that has nothing to do with skin color, you uh, kindredist twits. Okay? It's either or. It's A or B. It's black or white. There's no option C. There is no gray area. And see, Satan and all his, all the daughters of his church, Roman Catholicism, have done what? Introduced the gray area. Can't have it both ways, friend. Well, I, I'm not against God. That, if that works for you, that's fine. But why, why do I, I'm, yeah, I'm 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 a sinner, but I'm not that bad. I'm not against God, but you are, because the God that you're actually serving is yourself. Now let's continue in Ezekiel chapter sixteen, verse uh, picking up at verse eighteen. Okay, let's read verse seventeen again. Thou hast also taken thy fair jewels of my gold and of my silver. Uh, you're lost. You're lost today. God gave you life today. God gave you a chance, has given you a chance, the opportunity to seek him, to come to him on his terms, broken of your self-righteousness. Manning up, taking accountability and responsibility that you put him on the cross. He died because of what you did. Okay? And in fear of him because... If he don't save you, he's going to send you to hell. Oh, oh, oh but see, you, see, that's what you don't want to hear. That's what you don't want to hear. Yeah. Um, Jesus Christ is exclusive. Okay? Jesus Christ is objective, not subjective. Okay? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Jesus is, yeah, yeah, very objective. Okay, but let's continue. Yes, thou hast also taken thy fair jewels of my gold and of my silver, which I have given thee, and madest, and madest to thyself 
images of men, and didst commit whoredom with them, and tookest thy broidered garments, and coveredest them, and thou hast set mine oil and mine incense before them. So the life that the Lord has given you, which he wants you to come to him, to be with him, to praise him and worship him, okay, you're giving on to idols and to devils. But yet, you, you're not against God. Well, what God are you talking about? See, the God that you are talking about is yourself. The God that you worship is yourself. My meat also which I gave thee, fine flour and oil and honey wherewith I fed thee, thou hast even set it before them for a sweet savor. And thus it was, saith the Lord God. Now for our instruction in righteousness today, you lost wicked heathen you. Okay? God has given you life. God has given you breath. If you have food raining in today, it's because the Lord has allowed it. Okay? He has given you the chance today to come to Him on His terms. But what are you doing? You're going to devils. You're going to yourself. Moreover, thou hast taken thy sons and thy daughters whom thou hast borne unto me. And these hast thou sacrificed unto them to be devoured. Is this of thy whoredoms a small matter? And how, how does this apply for our instruction in righteousness? The Roman Catholic holiday. Satan clause. Teaching them covetousness. Bowing down at the feet of Rome. Okay. Making little idols out of your children. Trying to um, uh, live vicariously yourself through the accomplishments of your children. Turning them into little monsters. You're sacrificing your children to this world. Giving them video games and stuff like that. And coddling them. Not letting them go out there and get dirt on themselves. Not letting them fall off of a uh, off of a slide or something to get a scrape on their knee. Okay. Yeah. That thou hast slain my children and delivered them to cause them to pass through the fire for them. Now, doctrinally. This is under the dispensation of the law, what this is reading about. This is actually talking about actually sacrificing their children uh, in the fire to Moloch. Okay, they, this is uh, being, he's talking literal stuff that they would do. Okay, for our instruction in righteousness, this is what we are talking about, okay? And in all thine abominations, in thy whoredoms, thou hast not remembered the days of thy youth. When thou wast naked and bare, and was polluted in thy blood. And this right here is a, should be a wake-up call for some of us at the Church of the Living God. And it came to pass after all thy wickedness. Woe, woe unto thee, saith the Lord God, that thou hast also built unto thee an eminent place. An eminent place where you go to worship God yourself. Okay? And has made thee in high place in every street. Thou hast built thy high place in every head of the way. And has made thy beauty to be abhorred. And has opened thy feet to everyone that passed by. And multiplied thy whoredoms. Take the best of all worlds. Take a little flavor of Christianity, a little flavor of Buddhism, a little flavor of Hinduism, a little flavor of Islam. Yeah? Well, we, you're being too extreme. God wants us to enjoy life. Why can't we go ahead and, and, and indulge in these things, right? Yeah. Yes, let's read that again. Thou hast built thy high place at every head of the way. And hast made thy beauty to be abhorred, and hast opened thy feet to everyone that passed by, 
and multiply thy whoredoms. Verse 26, okay, check this out. Thou hast also committed fornication with the Egyptians, thy neighbors, great of flesh. Now, when we read this, this is actually talking about the Egyptian people. Here, but for our instruction and righteousness, Egypt is a type of the world. So the Egyptians, for our instruction and righteousness, are worldly people. Okay? What we're looking at, what we are looking at for our instruction and righteousness, dear brethren, is pretty much giving us a rundown of what we started this video out with, with those disgusting Christians and Elon Musk. Christianity today has opened her feet onto all, right? It's called ecumenicalism, which will be done away after the Church of the Living God, the body of Christ be redeemed, because during the time of Jacob's trouble, it's going to be a return to the Dark Ages where Rome ruled, okay? Rome does is being allowed to rule today, but see, the body of Christ is on the earth. He who now letteth will let until he, the church of the living God, be the body of Christ be taken out of the way. Then shall that wicked be revealed, that man of sin, the son of perdition, okay? Then once we, the body of Christ, the church of the living God is redeemed, see, it's erroneously referred to as the rapture, okay? Once that happens, it's going to be back to the old days, like the Dark Ages when Rome ruled, because Rome is going to be ruling openly, okay? But this is, this is a good description of what Christianity, the hodgepodge, the uh, melting pot of filth that Christianity has become, taking onto itself paganism given to them from Rome. Hmm. It is such, Christianity today is such, that thou hast committed fornication with the Egyptians, thy neighbors, great of flesh, and hast, provo and hast increased thy whoredoms to provoke me to anger. Behold, therefore, behold, therefore, I have stretched out my hand over thee, and have diminished thine ordinary food and delivered thee unto the will of them that hate thee. The daughters of the Philistines, which are shamed of thy lewd way. Wow. Now get a load of that. You know, there are some Muslims out there, when they look at what Christianity is, they're, they're, they're ashamed of it. It's like, we don't even do what you Christians allow. We don't even do that kind of stuff. That's how, that's how bad Christianity is. Okay. I'm not a Christian. I'm of the church of God, the church of the living God. I'm a saint. Okay. You're saved, born again, converted. You're a saint. Okay. You're a saint. All right. See, you've been deluded by what a, what a saint is by Rome. Okay. What a saint actually is for us today, in this, especially in this dispensation, you're called to be saints. Like it says in the book of Romans, saved. You're saved, you're a saint. Okay? All right? But, you know, like those guys that, in that video that we looked at, there are those like Hindus and Muslims would look at that. It's like, you know, not... We wouldn't even do that. We, we don't do that kind of stuff. Christianity. And look at the Jews. Okay? Look at a good example. Look at the Jews. They look at what this Christianity is. You think they're jealous of that? Huh? You think Jews, like Ben Shapiro, would look at, would see those Christians like that? You think he's jealous of that? No. But look at verse 26. Thou hast also committed fornication with the Egyptians, thy neighbors, great of flesh, and hast increased thy whoredoms to provoke me to anger. And how are we warned today against this? Okay? Go to go to 2 Corinthians chapter 6. 2 Corinthians chapter 6. Verses 14 on to the close of the chapter. 
Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Okay? Now, there are some out there who say this has nothing to do with marriage. Um, no, it does. I used to say that myself uh, till I was corrected. Okay? Um, do not... Uh, marriage is encompassed within that. Now, we read that, it's, you know, you'll say, well, that's talking about fellowship. Uh, uh, what's the ultimate fellowship besides your personal relationship with the Lord? What's second to that? The, the fellowship between a husband and a wife. Okay? But, be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? And what concord hath Christ with Belial or Belial? Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. Now, very quickly. Um, you are the temple of the living God if God dwells within you. Okay? All right? Your body is the temple of the living God. The living God, the Holy Ghost, the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord is that spirit, Jesus Christ our Father. Okay? That seal until the day of redemption. Once saved, always saved. Okay? You don't, you're not saved. You don't have God within you, the Holy Ghost, to seal until the day of redemption. Um, your body is not the temple of the Holy Ghost. Okay? All right? Hold your place. Oh, well, let's finish the verse. Okay? And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them. And I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Hold your place here. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Okay? Verses 16 and 17. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit, capital S, the Lord himself, and that, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? Okay? If any man defile the temple of God, any man including yourself, him shall God destroy, for the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. And that only applies to you if you have come to the Lord on his terms, broken of your self-righteousness, taken responsibility, and have not been Adamic. Well, yeah, I sinned, but, but, but they, but it was this, it was that. No, no. And how am I supposed to love someone I'm afraid of? broken of your self-righteousness, you're going to tell me that Elon Musk, Jordan Peterson, Ben Shapiro, okay? You're going to tell me guys like that are broken of their self-righteousness? Ben Shapiro would probably, well, I, I, I keep kosher, I keep the law. Yeah. Elon Musk, I mean, if you want to, you can, you can see his arrogance, his self-righteousness on display. Some will argue about Jordan Peterson. But see, his God is his mind. So his God is himself. Because there is that, again, that little pesky thing that many Christians de uh, struggle with, that resurrection. That oh so important, oh so factual resurrection. I cannot tell you, brethren, people. How many Christians I've encountered who when you get them, you get them in that corner. Because the, the spirit within you will be like, this, okay, this guy is calling himself a Christian. Okay. But yet, everything that he does, everything he says contradicts what I say. Check him out. Check him out. If that's something the Lord, you know, because sometimes, too, the Lord's like, hey, just get away from that guy. But some of these Christians, when they get back in a corner, you would be amazed at how many of them, these Christians, don't believe that Christ actually rose again from the dead. And, of course, with their lips, with their lips, there's, of course I believe in the resurrection. But you don't live, you don't walk as if 
you do. We all have weak moments, and we're going to address that in a moment. But let's continue here. Verse 17 in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 6. Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord. And touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. And I will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. Now, in three of the seven dispensations, okay, we have, see this commandment. In Isaiah, under the law, right here, uh, this time, uh, the time of the Gentiles, by grace through faith, and uh, after this dispensation, during the time of Jacob's trouble. This being separate from that. You see, you'll read that in Isaiah and the book of Revelation. Isaiah under the law, right here in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, during this dispensation, the time of the Gentiles, and also after this dispensation, the time of Jacob's trouble. In three different dispensations, crossing dispensational lines. Wherefore, come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you being separate other than that. And Christianity, as it sits today, it's a smorgasbord. It's a smorgasbord. There are some out there, you know, these King James Bible-believing Christians. <laughs> but yet, what are they doing right now? Right now. Right now. Right now. What are they doing right now? <laughs> Licking the foot of Rome. Hmm? Okay? See, what Christianity does is 1 Corinthians chapter 5. Okay? 1 Corinthians chapter 5. 1 Corinthians chapter 5. Verses 1 and 2. It is reported commonly that there is fornication among you. And such fornication as not so much as named among the Gentiles that one should have his father's wife. Verse 2. And ye are puffed up and have not rather mourned that he that hath done this deed might be taken away from among you. When there are Christian churches out there that allow women pastors that are geared to saying sodomy is okay because love is love. And then when these Christians in their church buildings, which have women pastors, which is against scripture, okay, which is against scripture, all right, and uh, sodomy, which is against scripture, okay, and mingle it, well, you got to be like the world to win the world, what happens? The sons of Ishmael, the Jews even, they look at this like, you're, you're Christians? That, look, at, look at what you're doing. You're being, even some atheists are like, okay, wait. If you're a Christian, aren't you supposed to be against these things? Huh? I, you know, uh, like the, some of the atheists that I've encountered, there's like, you know, Brad, you know, <laughs> I've got no problem, you know, with you believing that and how, uh, uh, what was it? Um, I've been called legalistic and stuff like that. Uh, I, you know, that if that works for you, but also from these atheists that I've encountered that I've had correspondence with, at least you stick to your guns. At least you stick to your guns. Where Christianity is all about compromise. You got to be like the world to win the world. Right? Look at, look at this month. Look at this month. These even bold... King James Bible believing Christians. Ha ha! Being like the world. Hmm? And atheists. Atheists is like, you know, if you're going to call yourself that, shouldn't you at least be trying to be different? Because what's the difference between you and me? The Jews, like I've said, 
They they look at what this is, and they're like, <laughs> yeah, you you goyim, you goyim, and you're Jesus. Yeah, look at you, look at you, look at you, the Muslim. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Look at it. We're supposed to be separate. We're supposed to be different. Hmm? But see, easy believism. With the with that way, if they're not against us, they're for us. Okay, just believe, and just believe. Look, look at what easy believism has led on to. Look online here, the doctrine of easy believism, where they twist. Yea, hath God said what repentance is. Repentance, according to the easy believism, is going from unbelief to belief. Thou believest there is one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. <laughs> okay? Okay? But now, there's a difference between someone not knowing and knowing but not wanting. Ignorance. Okay? Because now we're going to look at this um, and we're going to glean through the book of Acts because the easy believism heretic will go through the book of Acts and try to um, justify easy believism by saying, well, there are some people who, you know. Acts chapter 8. Acts chapter 8. Acts chapter 7 is significant because in Acts chapter 7, Jewry in its, in its entirety, not all the Jews, but Jewry as a nation, rejected the gospel, the kingdom of God. Okay? That's what you know with the stoning of Stephen. What happens in Acts chapter 8? We read the first Gentile saved in this dispensation. And this is this, this in Acts chapter 1. It's already this, this, for, uh, this dispensation. But it's to the Jew first and also to the Gentile, okay? Like the kingdom of heaven was first offered unto the Jews. They rejected that. Christ died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures and shed his blood on the cross to make atonement for sin. It is finished. Okay? That kingdom of God, the spiritual, was offered first unto the Jew. But Jewry rejected it in Acts chapter 7. And I've heard this now quite a few times from some of the, from some of the uh, wicked Hamites that are out there. Uh, who say, well, this, uh, you know, Christianity is the white man's religion. And when you read Acts chapter 8, um, the very first Gentile that you read about that was saved as we are saved today um, was an Ethiopian, a Hamite! Okay? Don't, don't, when you have these uh, wicked Hamites who say that Christianity, well, Christianity, yes, you're right. It is the white man's religion. You're right. But the faith that was once delivered unto the saints, that of the church of God, no, no, that's not the white man's religion. That's the faith. Okay, that is the true faith. But I guess they're right. Yes, Christianity is the white man's religion. You're right. But the faith that was once delivered unto the saints uh, that's to the Jew first and also to the Gentile. And guess what? My dear fellow Hamite, I'm a, Japheth, I'm a Japhethite. You're a Hamite? Okay? We're Gentiles. Okay? We're Gentiles. There are those of Shem that are Gentiles too. Okay? Okay? Remember, the Hebrew came out of Shem. Okay? Okay? If you're not a Jew, meaning of the Hebraic people, you're a Gentile. Okay? All right? So, the first one saved as we are saved today, um, as Paul preached, uh, you know, was a Hamite. A Hamite. Go figure. But go to Acts chapter 8, verses 9 on to verse 12. Here the easy believism heretic comes to, to say, well, just believe. And they're going to tell you that this guy is saved. Acts chapter 8, verses 9 on to verse 12. But there was a certain man called Shimon, which before time in the city used sorcery, Shimon the sorcerer, and bewitched the people of Samaria, giving out that himself was some great one. Mm -hmm. 
to whom they all gave heed, from the least to the greatest, saying, This man is the great power of God. And at this time, these people didn't know about the death, burial, and resurrection. They didn't know about, you know, what Jesus did and stuff like that, okay? And to him they had regard, because that, because that of a long time he had bewitched them with sorceries. But when they believed Philip, preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God, the spiritual, the death, burial, and resurrection, not the actual physical kingdom, which is the kingdom of heaven, okay? Repentance towards God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ, okay? The kingdom of God, this is spiritual. And the name of Jesus Christ, there is only one name given among men under heaven whereby we must be saved. They were baptized, identified, okay? Both men and women, okay? And if we were to continue reading on, we read why we get baptized, okay? Uh, Acts chapter 8, verse 37. If you're reading an NIV, an ESV, huh? or the new, uh, what is it, uh, New American Standard, read Acts chapter 8, verse 37 for me in your NIV. Oh, they have it in a footnote? That's a yea hath God said, uh, uh, putting down on it. Okay? But, so they heard of Jesus. But until then, they thought that Shimon the sorcerer was the great power of God. They didn't know. They were ignorant. Okay? They were ignorant. But when they heard the absolute truth, of the kingdom of God, spiritual, of Jesus Christ. It's like, oh, uh, what, what must I do to be saved? Okay? Look at verse 13. Then Shimon himself believed also. And when he was baptized, he continued with Philip and wondered, beholding the miracles and signs which were done. Now, the easy believism heretic will come to this and say, Shimon believed, therefore he was saved. He was saved, just like those guys did with Elon Musk. And, and they will. They say, Shimon the sorcerer was saved. No, he wasn't. No, he wasn't. It's an, it, God knows your heart right there, bub. Right? God knows your heart. Yes, he does. Someone says that, uh, proves to you that they're not saved. When they have to just, well, God knows my heart. <laughs> You're not saved. <laughs> yeah, because someone who's saved, yeah, God knows your heart. But if you're saved, you know your own heart that you, it's wicked. Okay? But the easy believism heretic will come to this and point to verse 13. Well, he believed. He was, he was also baptized. But if you were to continue reading and do this on your own time, he offered them money for the Holy Ghost. And what did Peter say? What did Peter say? Uh, Shimon's like, he saw them uh, laying on their hand, laying the hands on people and they receiving the Holy Ghost. And Shimon's like, hey, if I had this power, I could get back my good name that was taken from me by this Jesus because people started believing this. So you give me that power and see, hey, I all along was the great power of God. See, he was thinking of himself. He was his own God. Okay? And he offered them money. And what did Peter say? Verse 20. But Peter said unto him, Thy money perish with thee, because thou hast thought that the gift of God may be purchased with money. Thou hast neither part nor lot in this matter, for thy heart is not right in the sight of God. See, the sacrifices of God are a broken and contrite spirit. A broken heart is a heart that belongs unto God. There are people out there who have broken hearts, but yet they don't want to go to the Lord. Okay? They have a broken heart, but yet they're, they're still clinging to some self-righteousness. Okay? This guy's heart wasn't right. He wasn't broken. There's no brokenness here. And brokenness of your self-righteousness is a requirement for salvation. And what does the easy believism heretic do? Whoop! They jump over that. Those, those scum 
at the beginning there with Elon Musk. Oh, well, is it 60, 70? Well, you should. And what does Elon Musk say? It's like, I always wanted to be, uh, get saved. Uh, sounds good, you know? And he's sitting there all the while in a defensive, guarded posture with his arms crossed. Huh? He wasn't saved. He's not saved. Neither was Shimon. Neither was Shimon the sorcerer. Okay? But the easy believe is some heretic says, because he believed, but yet his heart wasn't right. Okay? Your heart needs to, you need a broken heart. You need to be broken. There's no brokenness here. Okay? The only thing here that Shimon was upset about was that he lost his uh, his um, name. He lost his standing among the people because he bewitched them through sorceries. That's it. There was no personal accountability. Prove it to you. Absolutely. Okay? Absolutely. And what, well, let's continue here. Verse 22. What does Peter say? Repent, therefore, of this thy wickedness. Well, repent is going from belief to uh, unbelief to belief. No. What is he repenting of? His self-righteousness. Okay? Again, another ploy of the easy believism heretic. Okay? They say, well, repentance is just going from unbelief to belief. That, that's baloney sandwiches. Okay? Repent, therefore, of this thy wickedness, and pray God, if perhaps the thought of thine heart may be forgiven thee. For I perceive that thou art in the gall of bitterness and in the bond of iniquity. Now, when one of us of the Church of the Living God get rebuked by a brother or a sister, or when the Lord makes us known through of uh, something through Scripture, what do we do? We go to the Lord personally. We, we go to Him personally and pray to the Lord ourselves. What does Shimon do? Then answered Shimon and said, Pray ye to the Lord for me. And because, and, and hey, what does the easy believism heretic say? What do you say? They're against, you know, praying for salvation. Okay? You know, uh, confess with your mouth. Okay, they're against that. What do they say? Prayer is a work. Prayer is a work. Just like repentance is a work. Right? Then answered Shimon and said, Pray ye to the Lord for me, that none of these things which ye have spoken come upon me. This Shimon the sorcerer was not saved. Don't, don't for one second, when you encounter, just believe. You believe in Jesus? Well, yeah. Oh, you're saved. You're saved. No, 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 no. No. Don't believe for one second. If you got someone telling you that she won the sorcerer was saved because he just believed. There was no brokenness there. No brokenness. There was no contrition. There was no fear of the Lord. There was none. And they go to, of course, to the Philippian jailer who is about to cough himself and the easy believism heretic will say, well, uh, that was worldly sorrow. If it was worldly sorrow, he would have killed himself. Okay? Because the sorrow of the world leadeth unto death. Okay? The slicker than snot easy believism devils. Okay? Now, Acts chapter 17. Acts chapter 17. Okay? Two verses. Acts chapter 17, verses 16 and 18. Okay? Acts chapter 17, verses 16 and 18. Now see, those people uh, uh, that we looked at in Acts, they didn't know the way. Okay? They thought that it was Shimon. And then along comes Philip. Okay? Someone who wants to see, who is seeking God, but yet doesn't know who, who or how to go about it. The Lord will send someone of the church of the living God. See, the, people are going to be without excuse. There is not going to be one person standing at the great white throne of judgment who's going to say, I never get, was given a chance to hear the gospel or to believe on Jesus Christ. That's never going to happen. Never going to happen. In one way or another, the Lord is going to send one of his body of the church of the living God onto said person, spirit's own body. Okay? Okay? But is it, they, they ain't going to be one innocent person in hell. They ain't going to be one innocent person at the great white throne of judgment who's going to be able to say, excuse me, that, well, I never heard the gospel. Not, no, 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 no. Every single person is, 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 that's going to be at that great white throne 
is going to say, well, I never heard the gospel. Acts chapter 17. And they come up, well, what about before that? Huh? What about before that? Uh, before that, that was um, dealt with when our Lord died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. And he went, you know, those that were in Abraham's bosom who were there waiting for the way to heaven to be opened because of the shed blood of Jesus Christ. Okay? Yeah, <laughs> go away. But Acts chapter 17 Verses 16 and 8 on to verse 18. Now while Paul waited for them at Athens, his spirit was stirred in him when he saw the city wholly given to idolatry. Therefore disputed he in the synagogue with the Jews and with the devout persons and in the market daily with them that met with him. Then certain philosophers of the Eupicreans and of the Stoics encountered him. And some said, What will this babbler say? And other some, he seemed to be a setter forth of strange gods, because he preached unto them Jesus, Jesus, and the resurrection. That that pesky little resurrection there, the pesky resur little resurrection there. Okay, all right. <laughs> so now, and you gotta remember too, the Athenians. Uh, concerned, always wanted to hear the newest thing. Okay? They always wanted to hear the newest thing. And look at verse 22 and 23 in Acts chapter 17. Okay? Then Paul stood in the midst of Mars Hill and said, Ye men of Athens, I perceive that in all things ye are too superstitious. Not religious. For as I passed by, I beheld your devotions. I found an altar with this inscription, to the unknown God, whom therefore ye ignorantly worship, didn't know. Him declare I unto you. Okay? Now, again, the easy believer, some heretic, will come to this and say, well, they just didn't know. Paul said to them, but they believed anyway. They just didn't know. So they were saying, no, 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 no. No. God, our Lord Jesus Christ, is objective is exclusive okay you can't be saved outside of jesus christ okay you can't have god's commandments without god himself which is what guys like jordan peterson elon musk uh, ben shapiro uh, uh adams what they tried to do they wanted god's what God had without God himself, without the miraculous, okay? And that doesn't work, all right? All right? But, so he preached, he took to his lips the trumpet of the resurrection, okay? What was the result of that, okay? Verses 32 on to verse 34 in Acts chapter 17. And when they heard of the resurrection of the dead, like I said, so many of these Christians that you meet, you know, especially right now, you know, you would be surprised how many of them don't truly believe in the resurrection of the dead. You would be surprised. And when they heard of the resurrection of the dead, some mocked. And others said, hmm, we will hear, the, hear thee again of this matter. Hmm. If you choose not to make a choice, you still have made a choice. So Paul departed from them among the so Paul departed from among them. How be it? Certain, just a few, certain men clave unto him and believed. Among the which was Dionysus the Areopagite, and a woman named Damaris, and others with them. Oh. So the majority of them mocked. Some like, huh, I need to hear a little bit more of this. And how many of those people do you run into, right? I need to hear a little bit more. I need to hear a little bit more. You've heard the gospel in its entirety. Well, I need to hear a little bit more. Indecisiveness, indecision. If you choose not to make a choice, you have still made a choice. Okay? Indifference. Indifference. 
Oh, I bet you if you were to ask uh, Satan what his favorite sins are, it would be vanity and indifference. Vanity and indifference. Absolutely. Absolutely, okay? And now go to Acts chapter 18. Verses. Now, see, there were some there that didn't know. Paul was declaring unto them the true God. These guys were worshiping false gods. And the ones that wanted to keep that false god that they were worshiping themselves, i.e. Satan, it's like, <laughs> yeah, the resurrection. And others, indecisive or oh, uh, indifferent, it's like, hmm, I need to hear more. But others were like, that, that, that's, 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 that's evil. I, that, you, the resur what must I do to be saved? See, they didn't know. And then once they heard the truth, some mocked, some was like, I need to hear more. And others were like, oh, oh, wow. Wow, they were pricked to their heart. Others cut to their heart, offended. They stopped their ears and gnashed their teeth. Now, Acts chapter 18, verses 24 and verse 28. A, and a certain Jew named Apollos, born at Alexandria. <laughs> the only good thing that came out of Alexandria, according to Scripture, Apollos. Alexandria. Okay, you look in Scripture, a very old video that the Lord had me do several years ago about Alexandrian Christians. Okay, <laughs> yeah, Alexandrian Christians. It's from Alexandria where Satan came up with the Septuagint long after the death of Jesus Christ, okay? That these Jesuits want you to believe that Jesus used the Septuagint. <laughs> that's, that's, that's a lie. That's yea hath God said at its worth. But Alexandria, Egypt, okay? Not good. Okay, like I said, you look in Scripture, uh, what's associated with Alexandria, it's usually, this is the, uh, Apollos is the only good thing, as it were, according to Scripture, that basically came out of Alexandria. The rest of it, uh, okay. And a certain Jew named Ap uh, Apollos, born at Alexandria, an eloquent man and mighty in the Scriptures, came to Ephesus. Mighty in the scriptures. Amen. This man was instructed in the way of the Lord. Okay. And being fervent in the lowercase s spirit. He spake and taught diligently the things of the Lord. Knowing only the baptism of John. Hmm. Knowing only the baptism of John. What, what is the baptism of John? Well, let's get a hold, a hold your place. And now let's go to Acts 19, verses 1 and verse 5 here. Okay? Another example here. We're going to continue on to verse 28, but we have to shift right here. Okay? Knowing only the baptism of John. Okay? Uh, Acts 19, verses 1 and verse 5. And it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coasts, came to Ephesus. And finding certain disciples, he said unto them, Have ye received the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost, since ye believed? And they said unto him, We have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. So, and Paul in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2 determined to know nothing amongst them save Christ and them crucified. So, obviously, if Paul was asking these people, uh, have you received the Holy Ghost? He obviously was like, I don't think these brethren are saved. Okay? And what do they say? We have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. And then Paul, and he said unto them, Unto what then were ye baptized? And they said, on, and they said Unto John's baptism. Then said Paul, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him which should come after him, that is on Jesus Christ. 
So the baptism of John, he was baptizing unto repentance. Unto what? The coming of Jesus Christ, the King of the Jews. Ah. See, the baptism of John was the baptism unto the kingdom of heaven. Because he, he, you know, Jesus Christ himself got baptized. And it was identification because John himself, okay, John the, ba John the Baptist himself saw the Spirit like as a dove descend upon the Lord. And John himself like, Behold, the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. And with that, you know, that identification when the Spirit descended like as a dove, identifying the Messiah, the Mashiach, who was born God, okay? That's another heresy that Jesus became God when the Holy Ghost, the dove, came out. No, 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 no. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. God manifests in the flesh, okay? Jesus was always God. The descending of the Holy Ghost as like a dove was identifying the Messiah for people to see. Okay, that's what that was about. The baptism of John was the baptism of repentance unto the Jewish people to make them ready for the coming of their king. Okay? So, the baptism of John was in relation to what? The kingdom of heaven. Ah. Ah. You understand? So, Knowing only the baptism of John, knowing only those things that were pertaining unto what? The kingdom of heaven. Okay? All right? And as, you read, as we read about Apollos, he was mighty in the scriptures. Absolutely. Absolutely. And verse 25, this man was instructed in the way of the Lord, being fervent in the lowercase uh, spirit, um, he spake and taught diligently the things of the Lord, knowing only the baptism of John. He only knew about the things pertaining unto the kingdom of heaven. Just like these other people that Paul encountered. And then go back to Acts 19, verse 4. Then said Paul, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him which should come after him, that is on Christ Jesus. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Now, uh, we're going to continue in Acts chapter 18, but in the name of the Lord Jesus, baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Hold your place here. Hold your place here. And go to Matthew chapter 28. Matthew chapter 28. I, I did, the Lord had me to do a video several years ago about this. And the more that uh, the Lord shows me through Scripture, water baptism is not salvific. It's not necessary for your salvation. No matter what the Catholic charismatics want you to believe or Catholics tell you, it is an outward profession of an inner conversion. You're not going to go to hell if you don't get baptized. Should you get baptized? Yes, I think you should. Is it a requirement for your salvation? No, it isn't. No, it isn't. Okay? But... Matthew chapter 28, verses 19 and 20. Go ye therefore, and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of, singular, one name, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. <laughs> the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. John chapter, uh, 1 John 5, verse 7. You know, the Johannian comma, which the Bibles take out. Okay? The Father, the Word, the Word that was made flesh. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. Okay? Go ye therefore, and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. So in the name of, you see that in verse 19? It doesn't say names like in the name of Yahweh, and in the name of Yeshua, and whatever the Hebrew name is, for uh, which I re don't remember, uh, for the Holy Ghost. No. And you, you, you know... I baptize you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. 
but it says in the name. And here in Acts chapter 19, it says, verse 5, when they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus, being baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. The only name given among men under heaven by which we must be saved. I believe that scripture tells us if you are going to be baptized, it is to, you are to be baptized in the name of Jesus. Now, hey, if you were baptized uh, in the name of the Father and the Son, uh, okay, baptism is not salvific. Okay, that isn't going to send you to hell. But I'm suggesting, uh, no, the scripture that when they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. There's only one name given among men under heaven by where, why or by we must be saved, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Whose name? Yeah. Yeah. The name of Jesus. And you note that it said in Matthew chapter 28, the name of, not names of. Okay. Just wanted to bring that to your attention. How are you baptized, Brad? In the name of Jesus Christ. Okay. But that, like I said, that's not salvific. It's not salvific. Okay. You're not going to go to hell if you were baptized in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. Okay. Should you get rebaptized? That that's up to you and the Lord. Okay. It's not a requirement for your salvation. Okay. But now let's get back to what let's get back to business. Okay. Acts chapter 18. Acts chapter 18. So Apollos was instructed only in the ways uh, in the baptism of John. He didn't know, did he? But look what happened. Back in Acts chapter 18, picking up at verse 26. And he began to speak, bold, speak boldly in the synagogue, whom when Aquila and Priscilla had heard, they took him unto them and expounded unto him the way of God more perfectly. It's like, hey, hey, you're talking about, you know, this things pertaining to the back. Come here. Christ Jesus died for our sins according to the scriptures, and he was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. What did they do? They obviously talked to Apollos about the resurrection, the death burial, the death burial and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, the cross, obviously, because he only knew the baptism of John. He obviously believed in that, right? And what happened? And when he was disposed to pass into Achaia, the brethren wrote, exhorting the disciples to receive him, whom, when he was come, helped them much which had believed through grace. See, now he was on the right track. And notice, this is Acts chapter 18, after Acts chapter 15, the Jerusalem conference, as it were, where everyone was preaching what Paul preached. Okay? For he mightily convinced the Jews, and that publicly, shewing by the scriptures that Jesus was Christ. And see, it says Jesus was Christ, where before it just said that he was um, diligent, uh, taught diligently the things of the Lord, knowing only the baptism of John. Until that point, he didn't know about the death, burial, and resurrection. And then when Priscilla and Aquila it's like, hey, come here. Let's, you, that, that's good, but you're missing something. And then they expound on the resurrection, Jesus. Then, verse 28, well, what, look what happened. For he mightily convinced the Jews in that publicly, showing by the scriptures that Jesus was Christ. Okay? All right? All right? <laughs> but and now we, we already looked about, um, now see, these are examples of people who did not know. Who did not know. But yet the Lord sent unto them someone to inform them of himself. He left them not without witness. And what we have looked at, these people bought it. Not bought it, but you know, it's like, oh, you know, like in Acts chapter 17, most of them mock. Some's like, oh, I need to hear more. But certain few clave unto them. The people, uh, when they were, they were duped by Shimon the sorcerer, then Philip came around. It's like, uh, you, that's the that's the real stuff. That Shimon, you go away, okay? Apollos, mighty in the scriptures, only knowing the baptism of John, about pertaining unto the kingdom of heaven, okay? 
These are examples of people not knowing, wanting to know. Okay? But see, there's another aspect. The, well, I'm not against God, but yet you're against what he requires to have a relationship with him. You want to have a relationship with him on your, you want to boot the door <laughs> and have your relationship with him on your terms, not his. What God do you worship? <laughs> I, I, I don't, I'm not against God. But yet, you don't want to have a relationship with him on his terms. You want to make the terms, don't you? Someone says to you, well, I'm not against God. They're against God. The God that they are for is the little G God of this world. The God that they look at in the mirror, i.e. themselves. That's the God they're for. But the God of the scriptures, which the Christians don't preach. Yeah. And it's so bad that guy, that even Islam, the Muslims, and the Taoists and Buddhists, like you, you Christians. Yeah. Okay. But go to Ezekiel chapter 14 now. Ezekiel chapter 14. Ezekiel chapter 14, verses 6 on to verse 8. Ezekiel chapter 14, verses 6 on to verse 8. Thus said, therefore say unto the house of Israel, Thus said the Lord God, Repent, and turn yourselves from your idols, and turn away your faces from all your abominations. Now, remember, an idol is only a stat... No. No. Is that... The idols there? What is that talking about in context? Yes, it's talking about a little statue. Yes, it is. Or a tree, whatever you want to call it. But instruction in righteousness... <laughs> what is an idol? An idol is something that you set up in your heart that is a stumbling block that gets in the way of you going to God. Okay? It's something that you set up in your heart that takes the place of God, that takes greater precedent, precedence. Whatever that could, it could be a statue, it could be a uh, dogma, as it were, whatever that means, okay, that's Catholic. It could be a, a Catholic dogma, it could be a principle, it could be a person, spiritual body, okay? It could be um, a, moral, a moral code, it could be ethics, okay? It could be anything, okay? It really can. It really can. Context, yes, it's talking about a statue, but that's not all an idol is. Watch out for people who want to defend paganism who tell you that an idol is only that. That's a yeah, God said, okay? For everyone of the house of Israel or of the strangers that sojourneth in Israel, which separateth himself from me and setteth up his idols... In his heart. <laughs> so is that idols just always a statue? Come on. Come on. Y'all, some of you out there know better. But you're doing that to justify uh, Rome. Yeah. And put it the stumbling block of his iniquity before his face. And come unto a prophet to inquire of him concerning me. I, the Lord, will answer him by myself. Yeah, you need to yell, repent! Repent! Yeah, that's how he's answering you. Repent! You're, 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 you're wicked, you're in idolatry. Okay? Yeah. And I will set my face against that man. Yeah, you better repent of your idolatry. Okay? And will make him a sign and a proverb. And I will cut him off from the midst of my people, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. Yeah, I'm not against God. Yes, you are. Because the idol that you are idolizing is yourself. Your own idea, your own mind, your own thoughts, your own actions. Okay? Some of them, it's like, it, it might be Buddha, it might be Allah. Idols. Okay? All right? Remember, friend, please, remember, 
When you hear Christians trying to tell you an idol is only a statue and nothing else, run away from such a one such as that. Okay? All right? But now, uh, okay, uh, First Thessalonians, First Thessalonians, okay? First Thessalonians, chapter 1, verses 9 and 10. Very, just quickly, First Thessalonians 9 and 10, chapter 1. For they themselves shew of us what manner of entering in we had unto you, and how ye turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God, and to wait for his Son from heaven, whom he raised up from the dead, even Jesus, which delivered us from the wrath to come. Which delivered us from the wrath to come. Yeah. And remember, now, he, Paul's making reference about the idols, the statues. But you got to remember, that's not all an idol is. Okay? And when someone is worshiping an, an idol, an object, okay, there are many things that get attached, many principles, many, uh, yeah, many principles, many morals that get associated, attached with the idolatry of that object. Look at what's going on today. I rest my case. Look at what's going on right now. I rest my case. Okay? All right? And let's go back to Acts chapter 17. Go back to Acts chapter 17. Okay? Now, let's, re let's, really, um, let's really drive. Uh, put the nail in this. Acts chapter 17, verses 30 under verse 32. In the times of this ignorance, God... Wink that. But now commandeth all men everywhere to repent. It's not believe. The devils also believe and tremble. What are you repenting of? Yourself. Because when it comes right down to it, idolatry is all about what? You. What makes you feel good. What you want to do. Hmm? Look what look at look at the season we're in right now. Look at the season we're in right now. And trying to affix to Catholicism things that be of our Lord. How dare you? But shh. Okay? Because he hath appointed a day in which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he hath ordained, whereof he hath given assurance unto all men. And that he hath raised him from the dead. It was actually uh, on to verse 31 because we already uh, read um, 32 on to verse 34. But yeah, there's that resurrection from the dead again. Okay, And then what does that mean This in the times of this ignorance? He winked at. Okay, Under the current dispensation, if Gentiles wanted to be right with God, they had to go under the law. They had to go to the Jew, the Hebrew. They had to do the things that were pertaining onto the law. The law has been fulfilled. You don't have to keep the law today to be right with God, to be saved, or stay saved. Okay? All right? It's after the, the you know, the baptism of John, which was onto the kingdom of heaven. Okay? The doctrine for us today in this dispensation. Okay? All right? Now, go to 1 Corinthians chapter... Uh, one, First Corinthians chapter one. Okay, but see these people like Musk, Peterson, um, Shapiro, and so many other Christians. Well, I'm not against God, but you know, I I just you know, well, I'm I'm for the good teachings of Jesus. But see, what does that tell you? They're against brokenness. The, being broken of their self-righteousness because they are self-righteous. They are their own gods. They know what is good and evil. Like Musk, Peterson, and Shapiro, what do they worship? They worship their brains. Yeah. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 17 on to verse 24. For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. And you see that thing which uh, Peterson did with uh, Joe Rogan? He was using the wisdom of words. There was no power in what he was saying. 
There was none. Why? Because he's not saved. Okay? For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved, to are saved, not being saved, like it says in the Bible, it is the power of God. Okay? And see, the way that Jordan Peterson was talking to Joe Rogan, that was a cross that wasn't foolish unto Joe Rogan. And Joe Rogan, that wicked devil, he's going straight to hell, and he, he pronounces it to you. Who would wipe the floor with me in a heartbeat, okay? But, I mean, yeah, that uh, what Jordan Peterson was telling Joe Rogan had zero power to it. Why? Because it was of his own mind. He was using the wisdom of words. Not the power of the Holy Ghost. Because uh, Jordan Peterson does not have the Lord Jesus Christ dwelling within him. Okay? For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Hath not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? For after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. And what wisdom are they talking about? Not the one that comes from heaven, but that wisdom that is what? Earthly, sensual, devilish. Okay? For after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. Foolishness. Foolishness unto who? Unto the world. Unto people like Jordan Peterson, Ben Shapiro, Elon Musk, who worship their brains, who are willing to hear this easy believism slop. Okay? Like you, like you saw in that video. Like you said, always wanted to get saved. Uh, sounds good. Sitting there. Sounds good. Yeah, sure. You say I'm saved because, yeah, I, I, I believe in Jesus. Of course I do. Of course. I mean, he taught good things. Yes, and it's provable. He was an actual person, spirit, soul, and body. Okay, yes. But yeah, sure. You say because I just believe. Sure. <laughs> it's, it's nonsense. Easy believism is nonsense. Okay? And like I said, Elon Musk. It's like, hey, hey, I, I'm not going to stand in his way. I'm not against God. But see, he doesn't want to have a relationship with God, God's way. He wants to eat his cake, have his cake and eat it too. Okay, let's continue. For the Jews require a sign, and the Greeks, Gentiles, seek after wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified. <laughs> Unto the Jews a stumbling block, Ben Shapiro. And unto the Greeks, foolishness, Gentile, Elon Musk. Unless you tweak it and say, just believe. Yea, have God said. But unto them which are called, called. God chose the way of the cross. Okay? God chose the cross as he chose the law under the dispensation of the law. Okay? He chose the way of the, uh, the cross. You go his way to him, you are the called. Okay? That's what that means. That has nothing to do with your kindred or skin color. You wicked kindredist. Okay? It has nothing to do with your kindred or skin color. Okay? Called. He called the way of the cross. That's the called way. Okay? But unto them which are called both Jews and Greeks, Gentiles, Christ, the power of God, and the wisdom of God. There's power in the resurrection. There's power in the, in the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. There's power. Why? Because the Lord lives in you. If you come to him on his terms, broken of your self-righteousness, manning up, Having godly sorrow, contrition. It's your fault he died. He died because of you. Yeah, he died because of me. Yes, yes. My hand held the hammer. I put the crown on his head. I put the nails in his hands and feet. Okay? It was because of my sin he died. Yes. Okay? And I can't save myself. I deserved to go to hell. Okay? I deserve death, hell, and the grave. I do. 
I do. I said deserved. I deserve death, hell, and the grave. But by his grace, he saved me. Okay? I'm doing better than I deserve. I deserve death, hell, and the grave. Forgive me for saying deserved. I deserve death, hell, and the grave. Okay? How are you, how are you doing today, Brad? Better than I deserve. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. Okay? And now go to uh, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, uh, chapter 2, verses 1 on to verse 5. I made reference to this earlier. And I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. Like these guys do. Okay? Like John MacArthur who uses and wants to impress you with his wisdom and stuff like that. And uh, uh, that, that wicked Paul Washer, okay? These uh, Jesuit-trained cemeterians, okay? For I determined not to know anything among you, save Jesus Christ and him crucified. I determined not to know anything among you, save Jesus Christ and him crucified. What does that mean? Who is really saved? Who really has the Lord? Like Paul encountered in Acts 19. It's like, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? We haven't heard of the Holy Ghost. Aha. Well, then uh, what, do you, what, were, what were you baptized onto? The baptism of John. Okay. Kind of like Apollos. Okay. Okay, here. Christ Jesus died for our sins according to the scriptures. He was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. He shed his blood on the cross to make an atonement for your sin. Uh, that sin that you committed against him, that you did to him, and because of you and your sin, he died. Okay? See how that works? All right? So what is he saying in verse 2? And those, and hold your place there, and this we have to, we've done this countless times, we're doing it again. Okay, Galatians 2, verses what? 20 and 21. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless I live, yet not, not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not frustrate the grace of God. For if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. Okay? Then Christ is dead in vain. So he was looking for people who had Christ living within them. Okay? Who were crucified with Christ. That's what he's talking about. Okay? And my speech... Oh, and I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power. Enticing words of man's wisdom, like we saw at the beginning of this video, like John MacArthur, like all these easy believism devils who skip over repentance, okay? Brokenness and contrition and fear of the Lord. They skip all over that and go right to believe, making false converts all the way. And my speech and my preaching was not with the enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the capital S spirit, denoting the Lord, um, noting the Lord Himself, and of power. That your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. And that's exactly what easy believism is the wisdom of men. There's no power. The only power that it has is from the little G God of this world. And that's no power. Oh, sure, it is powerful. But a power that goes on to eternity? No. No. What you saw at the beginning of this video lacked the power of God. Absolutely it did. And what are we to do? That brokenness. See, brokenness is a requirement. Brokenness. Brokenness, which easy believism wants to avoid. When someone says, I'm not against God, they're against having a relationship with God on his terms. They want to dictate it on their own terms. You want a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father? you got to be broken. And what do we do? What do we preach? Acts chapter 20. Acts chapter 20, verses 19 on to verse 21. 
19 on to verse 21. Acts chapter 20. Serving the Lord with all humility of mind and with many tears and temptations which befell me by the lying of weight of the lying and weight of the Jews, and how I kept back nothing that was profitable unto you, but have shewed you and have taught you publicly and from house to house testifying both to the Jews and also to the Greeks, Gentiles, repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. Paulus knew only the baptism, uh, baptism of John. Repentance towards God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. The people in Acts chapter 19 who Paul encountered, they only knew the baptism of John, which was baptism of John had everything to do with the kingdom of heaven. Okay? The kingdom of heaven. Repentance towards God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. The death, burial, and resurrection. Brokenness. Contrition. And the fear of the Lord. Which easy believism, those guys at the beginning, are against. You have to be broken of your self-righteousness. And see, we all have weak moments, brethren. People, I, I, you know, well, Brad, you talk about brokenness, but yet you say you have a pride problem. Yes, I do. I have a big pride problem. But see, I can't save myself. I am not a good person. And it's a daily struggle with that pride every single day. Okay? We, we all have weak moments. Okay? Uh, go back to Galatians chapter 2. Galatians chapter 2. Okay? Go back to Galatians chapter 2. Look at verses 16 on to verse 19. Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ, even we have believed in Jesus Christ, that we might be justified by the faith of Christ, and not by the works of the law. He's specifically talking about the works of the law. Okay, For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. But if we... But if, while we seek to be justified by Christ, we ourselves also are found sinners, is therefore Christ the minister of sin? God forbid. Okay? All right? Christ never sinned. Okay? The flesh of Jesus Christ was sinful, but he kept the law perfectly and never even had a sinful thought. God can't sin. Hence, the sinful flesh was sanctified by the perfect God who dwelt within that flesh. Okay? Okay? That's what that means. So, when we seek to be justified by Christ, it's His grace through faith that justifies us. Okay? And that's what that's talking about. For if I build again the things which I destroyed, I make myself a transgressor. I make myself a transgressor. Sin. Okay? Paul struggled with pride. It was his pride that brought him to Jerusalem when the Lord told him, uh, don't go. It was, you know, he compromised with James going into the temple and before he offered an animal for sacrifice, the Lord's like, okay, I told you not to come here and now you're about, no, and he stepped in and all Hades broke loose. Okay? We have weak moments, okay? Our pride, you know, our self-righteousness is destroyed. But what happens when our pride flares up? We make ourselves transgressors, okay? We all have weak moments. Paul had weak moments. Peter had weak moments. We all have weak moments. You want to see one of the greatest examples of a weak moment? Now, we've talked about John. Okay, go to Luke chapter 7. Luke chapter 7. Okay, I, I've had that. It's like, Brad, you talk about being broken, but yet you have a pride problem. Yeah, the Lord broke me. I can't save myself. I'm not a good person. I put him on the cross. He died because of me, and I'm scared to death of the Lord. And I called upon his name, and he saved me. Okay, but yet... My spirit and soul are housed within the sagging skin suit. Okay? And the flesh is sinful. Okay? Scripture plainly teaches that. Okay? All right? The Lord saved me because he broke me. 
But because of this, okay, I make bad choices and my pride flares up. We all have weak moments, okay? Looking at one of the best examples of a weak moment, Luke chapter 7, verses 19 on to verse 23. Now we talked about John the Baptist, right? Okay? Who knew who Jesus was. Who identified, who leapt in the womb when uh, Mary and Elizabeth or Elizabeth were together, right? He knew. It's like, there's the Lamb of God. Here's a weak moment for you. Luke chapter 7, verses 19 on verse 23. And John, calling unto him two of his disciples, sent them to Jesus, saying, Art thou he that should come, or look we for another? Wait a minute. <laughs> who would have, who else but John, who better than John the, the Baptist should have known that Jesus is the Christ? He, he was one of the ones who saw the Spirit descend like as a dove on Christ. He is like he, he even said himself, the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. Who better than John the Baptist should have known that Jesus is the Christ? Right? Who better than that? But he's like, are you the one who's to come? What happened? He rebuked Herod for having uh for taking uh, the wife of his brother or something like that. So Herod rebuked Herod, uh, so John rebuked Herod. And then he was going to get his head cut off uh, by Herod because the girl danced for Herod. And she's like, give me John the Baptist's head and charger. So he was cast in prison. He knew he was going to get his head cut off. So he was like, Are you, 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 the Lord, you, you're, you're the one we should look for, right? Right? And who would have known better than John the Baptist, right? When the... When the men were come unto him, they said, John Baptist has sent us unto thee, saying, Art thou he that should come, or look we for another? In that same hour, and verse 21, I love this. And in that same hour, he cured many of their infirmities and plagues, and of evil spirits. And unto many that were blind, he gave sight. Then said, then Jesus answering, said unto them, Go your way, and tell John what things ye have seen and heard, how that the blind see, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised to raised to the poor. The gospel is preached, and blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me. And we all know about you know Paul who had weak moments in Second Corinthians chapter eleven. Okay, you know about how he was weak and how he glories in infirmities. But here, John the Baptist of all people knew who Christ was, but yet he was he was like, are you are you really the Christ? He had a weak moment. And what does the Lord do? It's like, oh, you, you, what, you want proof? And then it's like, it's like, okay, watch, watch. Here, you guys, you see what I do. You go confirm, console John. Yeah, I am. And blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me. Okay? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay? But now here's the thing. Now we all have weak moments. As the church of the living God, we have weak moments. Yes. Yes, we do. But see, we've come to the Lord on his terms and we are sealed unto the day of redemption. Once saved, always saved. Okay? We have weak moments, but we don't remain in them. And if we're sticking there, the Lord's going to chasten us sore. And if we are too stubborn, he'll kill us. Okay? To hand such a one over to Satan for the destruction of the flesh that the spirit will be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. But here's the thing. Go to Joshua 24. Joshua 24. Joshua 24. Joshua 24. Verses 14 on to verse 15. Joshua 24 verses 15 on to verse 14. 14 on to verse 15, excuse me. Now therefore, fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in truth. And put away the gods, little g, which your father served on the other side of the flood and in Egypt, and serve ye the Lord. And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom ye will serve, whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land ye dwell. But as for me and my house, 
We will serve the Lord. You got to make the right choices, dear friend. You can choose to scoff at the resurrection or you can choose to not choose and still make a choice. Or be terror stricken. It's like, wow, I want you, Lord. I, I, I can't save myself. You have to remember, salvation is not at gunpoint like what Mr. Calvin taught and which others teach in a veiled way. What do you choose? The way, the way of God is there for everybody, but not everybody's going to go on his terms. That's the thing. People want to go on their own terms. They want to boot the door, and Jesus Christ is the door, and they want to go their own way. No. Job 21. Job 21, verses 7 on to verse 18. Job 21, verses 7 on to verse 18. Job 21, verses 7 on to verse 18. Wherefore do the wicked live, become old, yea, are mighty in power? Their seed is established in their sight with them, and their offspring before their eyes. Their houses are safe from fear, neither is the rod of God upon them. God doesn't chasten his own, uh, God doesn't chasten those who aren't his. He lets Satan do that, <laughs> okay? <clears throat> yeah, um, what, God, uh, who, what God is answering your prayers, okay? Their bull gendereth and faileth not. Their cow calveth and casteth not their, her calf. They send forth their little ones like a flock, and their children dance. They take the timbrel and harp and rejoice at the sound of the organ. They spend their days in wealth and in a moment go down to the grave. Therefore they say unto God, Depart from us, for we desire not the knowledge of thy ways. What is the Almighty that we should serve him? And what profit should we have if we pray unto him? Lo, their good is not in their hand. The counsel is the wicked, the counsel of the wicked is far from me. How oft is the candle of the wicked put out? And how oft come their des destruction upon them? God distributed his sorrows in his anger. They are as stubble before the wind, and as chaff that the storm carrieth away. God layeth up his iniquity for his children. He rewardeth him. And he shall know it. His eyes shall see his destruction, and he shall drink of the wrath of the Almighty. For what pleasure hath he in his house after him when the number of his months is cut off in the mist? I'm not against God, but I don't want your God. I want my God, a God that doesn't judge, a God that doesn't have any requirements. A God that doesn't change me, okay? A God that doesn't make me a new creature. I want to be able to do what I want to be able to do, but yet have God bless it. I'm not against God. I'm against your God. I'm against the God of the scriptures. I want a God that says smooth things unto me. You see? You see? And that's what easy believism offers you. That's what easy believism offers you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. And now go to Luke chapter 18. Luke chapter 18. See, they have all the best things of the world. They want the best things of the world. And we are not to be like the world. We are to be different than that. But easy believism says, just believe. You can have those things of the world. You ought not to, but don't worry. You believe you're saved. Luke chapter 18. Luke chapter 18. You know, before we go to Luke chapter 18, what are these people? What are these people? Go to uh, Psalm 53. Psalm 53. Beg your pardon. Psalm 53. Psalm 53. Psalm 53. What are these people? So, well, I don't, I'm not against God. What are these people? Psalm 53, verses 1 on to verse 3. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. Corrupt are they, 
and have done abominable iniquity. There is none that doeth good. And what's good? God looked down from heaven upon the children of men to see if there were any that did understand, that did seek God. Every one of them has gone back. They are altogether become filthy. There is none that doeth good. No, not one. And guys like Peterson, Musk, Shapiro, easy believism, they like to skip that. They believe they, they are good because they saved themselves by their own belief. The fool says in his heart, there is no God. They might, Elon Musk. It's like, I'm not, you know, eh, you know, he's not against God. He's not against Jesus. If he's saving people, I'm not going to get in his way. What is he saying? I'm not against God. With his lips, he says that. But see, in his heart, he says there is no God. He's a fool. He's a fool. Go to Luke chapter 18. The fool says in his heart, there is no God. They, they, won't, they might not say with their lips that there is no God, but they say it in their heart. And oh, how many of those Christians have you encountered that they profess with their mouth, but their heart is far from them. And remember, God doesn't, doth know your heart. Yeah, he sure does. <laughs> Luke chapter 18. Luke chapter 18, verses 18 on to verse 23. Okay. The woman, you know, there was a woman who came and uh, had an alabaster box of ointment. Uh, Jesus went to a Pharisee's house and this woman who was a sinner came in and uh, wept and sat behind the Lord and wiped her, uh, his feet with her tears and stuff like that. Luke chapter 18, verses 18 on to verse 23. And a certain ruler asked him, good master, what shall I, oh, we're looking at the rich young ruler. We'll, we'll get to that here in a minute, okay? Um, good master. And a certain ruler asked him, saying, Good master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said unto him, Why callest thou me good? None is good save one, that is God. Thou knowest the commandments, do not commit adultery, do not kill, do not steal, do not bear false witness. Honor thy father and thy mother. And he said, All these have I kept from my youth up. Now when Jesus heard these things, he said, he said unto him, Yet lackest thou one thing. Sell all that thou hast, and distribute unto the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come follow me. And when he heard this, he was very sorrowful. Why? Why? Why was he very sorrowful? For he was very rich. Sorry about uh, going off in that other direction. I was... Uh, I was, uh, <laughs> sorry about that, sorry about that. But the rich young ruler, he goes to the Lord, good master, good master. What did he see? He only saw someone who could uh, do things for him fleshly. And what did the, the Lord put his finger on that one thing that he lacked. He was very rich. He had things of the world and he went away sorrowful. Okay. He had eyes to see. He had eyes to see, and he only saw a man. He didn't see the Son of God, the Son of David. He didn't see the Messiah. But now, look at the contrast here. Look at the contrast in um, verses 33 on to verse 43 in uh, Luke chapter um, in Luke chapter 18. Uh, all right. Uh, verse 35, excuse me. And it came to pass, uh, verse 35 on to verse 43, excuse me, okay? And it came to pass that as he was come nigh unto Jericho, a certain blind man sat by the wayside begging. And hearing the multitude pass by, he asked what it meant. And they told him that Jesus of Nazareth passed by. And he cried, saying, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. This was a, a blind guy who could not see, obviously. But yet the rich young ruler, he saw, and he went to Jesus, good master. And Jesus said, why callest thou me good? There's none good but one, that is God. The rich young ruler didn't see God. Didn't know he was talking to the Messiah. Here's a blind guy. Here's a blind guy who heard Jesus was coming by. And what did he do? Verse 38. And he cried saying, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And they that went, and they which went before rebuked him that he should hold his peace. But he cried so much the more, Thou son of David, have mercy on me. 
And Jesus stood and commanded him to be brought unto him. And when he was come near, he asked him, saying, What wilt thou that I shall do unto thee? And he said, Lord, that I may receive my sight. And Jesus said unto him, Receive thy sight, thy sight, thy faith has saved thee. And immediately he received sight and followed him, glorifying God. And all the people, when they saw it, pray, gave praise unto God. One second, brother. Sorry about that. You know, now in Luke 7, where I was talking to you about that uh, woman who went and wept at Jesus' feet when um, he was invited by the Pharisee, go to Luke chapter 7, okay? Verses, um, uh, what is that? Uh, verses 36 on to verse 40. And one of the Pharisees desired him that he would eat with him. And he went into the Pharisee's house and sat down to meet. And behold, a woman in the city which was a sinner, when she knew that Jesus sat at meat in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster box of ointment and stood at his feet behind him weeping and began to wash his feet with his tears, with her tears, and did wipe them with the hairs of her head and kissed his feet and anointed them with the ointment. And when the Pharisee, which had bidden him, saw it, he spake within himself, saying, This man, if he were a prophet, would have known whom and what manner of woman this that toucheth him, that this is that toucheth him, for she is a sinner. Hmm. And was and our Lord begins, and Jesus answered, answering said unto him, Shimon, I have somewhat to say unto thee. And he saith, Master, say on. And the Lord goes on to say, uh, you know, you gave me no kiss, you gave me nothing, but yet this woman has not ceased to kiss my feet. See. The rich young ruler saw only a man, didn't realize, didn't have eyes to see that that was his Messiah. The Pharisee there, you know, this man were a prophet. He didn't, you know, he just invited Jesus. It's like, hey, this is the thing to do. Here's this Jesus, right? 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 Yeah. 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 These people were blind. Why? Because... They were their own gods. They worshipped themselves. What were they in uh, Titus chapter 1? What were these people? Titus chapter 1? Titus chapter 1 verse 16? Titus chapter 1 verse 16? They profess that they know God. But in works they deny him, being abominable and disobedient. And unto every good work reprobate. And remember, you know, we are called on to good works, not to save ourselves or to be saved or stay saved, okay? We are called on to good works in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 on to verse 10, okay? God doesn't save you to sit there idle and do nothing, okay? All right? People like what we looked at, Elon Musk and Jordan Peterson, Ben Shapiro, they profess that they know God, but in works they deny him, Okay? Oh, they might give to charity, they might help people, but those aren't the works. The works that we are called to are ambassadors for Christ, preaching Christ, the resurrection, having the word of reconciliation, and the ministry of reconciliation, preaching the death, burial, and resurrection, okay? Not mere ethics or morality, okay? Also, Ezekiel chapter 33, Ezekiel chapter 33, Ezekiel chapter 33, Ezekiel chapter 33, verses 30 on to verse 33. A perfect example right here. Ezekiel chapter 33, verses 30 on to verse 33. Also thou son of man, the children of thy people sit, are, uh, also thou son of man, the children of thy people still are talking against thee by the walls and in the doors of the houses. And speak one to another, every one to his brother, saying, Come, I pray you, and hear what is the word that cometh forth from the Lord. And they come unto thee as the people cometh, and they sit before thee as my people, and they hear thy words, but they will not do them. For with their mouth they shew much love, but their heart goeth after their covetousness, and the Lord abhorreth the covetous. And lo, thou art unto them a very lovely song of one that hath a pleasant voice and can play well on an instrument. For they hear thy words, but they do them not. 
I'm not against God. I'm, I'm for the teachings of Jesus, some of the things that Paul said, but I don't want I don't want to have a relationship with your God the way he wants me to. I want to do it my own way. I am my own God. And when this cometh to pass, lo, it will come to pass, then shall they know that a prophet hath been among them. Oh, I'm not against God. I don't, do you know, like what we saw Elon Musk say, so many people, and then here comes easy believism. Just believe, and you can have all that stuff along the way, too. Yeah. Yeah. You want to hear, you want to see a perfect example of this? Go to Exodus chapter 5. Now, you remember um, how we looked at John the, uh, the Baptist and how our Lord... Uh, after he, uh, John the Baptist sent people to the Lord, he's saying, are you, are you the guy? Are you the one? And the Lord is like, okay, check this out. Exodus chapter 5. Exodus chapter 5, verses 1 and 2. And afterward, Moses and Aaron went in and told Pharaoh, Thus saith the Lord, God of Israel, Let my people go, that they may hold a feast unto me in the wilderness. And Pharaoh said, Who is the Lord that I should obey his voice? let Israel go. I know not the Lord, neither will I let Israel go. Now put this in context with John the Baptist. John the Baptist rebukes Herod, right? Moses goes to Pharaoh, let my people go. And what happens? Moses goes to Pharaoh and Pharaoh's like, you're idle, what, what are you doing? Get back to work. So he afflicts the children of Israel even more, right? And then in Exodus chapter 5, Moses goes to the Lord. It's like, Lord, ever since I spake, it got worse. Lord, what are you doing? John the Baptist. He, he rebukes Herod for having his brother's wife. And he's going to get his head cut off. So he has a weak moment. It's like, are you the one? And then what does the Lord do? In front of his people that he sent, he's like, Here, watch this. Watch this. And he goes and heals a bunch of people. In Exodus Chapter 6, verse 1. Then the Lord said unto Moses, Now shalt thou see what I will do to Pharaoh. For with a strong hand shall he let them go, and with a strong hand shall he drive them out of this out of his land. Same thing happened like what we just saw here with John the Baptist. Okay? Jews require a sign. Alright? The Lord in the same manner. Moses goes, uh, Lord, it, 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 it's worse. And then what does the Lord say there in Exodus 6 1? Now you're going to see, boy, check it out. Now you're going to see what I'm going to do. The Lord with John the Baptist, he's like, heals a whole bunch of people. And he's like, you go tell John, go tell John what you see. And blessed is he who is not offended in me. Same thing. Same thing. Same thing happening there. Okay? And also, too, you can read about Nabal. Okay? You can read about Nabal, who rejected David. And interestingly enough about that, okay, let's, let's go to that. 1 Samuel chapter 25. 1 Samuel chapter 25. 1 Samuel chapter 25. Come on, fingers, work with me. 1 Samuel chapter 25, verses 4 into verse 11. Nabal. And David heard in the wilderness that Nabal, excuse me, did shear his sheep. And David sent out ten young men, and David said unto the young men, Get you up to Carmel, and go to Nabal, and greet him in my name. And thus shall ye say to him that liveth in prosperity, Peace be to thee, and peace be to thine house, and peace be unto all that thou hast. And now I have heard that thou hast shears. Now thy shepherds were, which were with us, we hurt them not, neither was there aught missing unto them, all the while they were in Carmel. Ask thy young men, and they will shew thee. Wherefore, let the young men find favor in thine eyes, for we come in a good day. Give, I pray thee, whatsoever cometh to thy, thine hand unto thy servants, and to thy son David. And when David's young men came, they spake to Nabal, according to all these those words, in the name of David, and ceased. And our Lord Jesus Christ is the son of David, hmm? meaning king of the Jews. 
Look at his response. And the Baal answered David's servants and said, Who is David? And who is the son of Jesse? There be many servants nowadays that break away every man from his master. Shall I then take my bread and my water and my flesh that I have killed from my shears and give it unto men whom I know not whence they be? Hmm. You might be saying, well, what does this have to do with anything? Go to John chapter 7. John chapter 7. John chapter 7, verses 25 on to verse 31. John chapter 7, verses 25 on to verse 31. Then said some of them of then said some of them of Jerusalem, Is not this he whom they seek to kill? But lo, he speaketh boldly, and they say nothing unto him. Do the rulers know indeed that this is very Christ? Howbeit we know this man whence he is. But when Christ cometh, no man knoweth where whence he is. Then cried Jesus in the temple as he taught, saying, Ye both know me, and ye know whence I am, and I am not come of myself. But he that sent me is true, whom ye know not. But I know him, for I am sent from him, and he hath sent me. Then they sought to take him, but no man laid hands on him, because his hour was not yet come. And many of the people believed on him, and said, When Christ cometh, will he do more miracles than these which this man hath done? And they knew that he came out of Galilee. Okay? They knew that he came out of Galilee. And um, look across the page at verse 40 on the verse, uh, 41 on the verse 42. Others said, this is the Christ. But some said, shall Christ come out of Galilee? Hath not the scripture said that Christ cometh of the seed of David, out of the town of Bethlehem where David was? And yes, he did. He, he was born in Bethlehem, of the seed of David, from the lineage of Mary which is given to us in Luke, okay? Because Joseph was not Jesus' daddy, okay? But they didn't know where he was. They know, But he said, you know from whence I am. He came from Galilee. But what is he talking about? Like with the rich young ruler and with the Pharisee that was at uh, whose house he went to and with Pharaoh, okay? They knew where Jesus came from, but they didn't know because they didn't have eyes to see. They didn't want to see. They didn't want to know that their Messiah was right there. They knew where they came from. Yes, they did. They knew he came from Galilee. They knew that he, you know, that his brothers and sisters and whatnot, you know, the son of the carpenter, he, Joseph wasn't his father, but you know, they knew him. And Jesus like, you know where, who I am. You know where I am from. But see, he answers it in verse 28. Ye both know me, and ye know whence I am. And I am not come of myself. He answers it right there. But he that sent me is true, whom ye know not. They didn't know God. Therefore, because they didn't know who God was, they only saw a carpenter. They only saw a good master. They only saw a guy who was, if he were a prophet. They only see a guy who has good teachings, who has good morals. They don't see God. Why? Because they, will, they are willfully ignorant. That's why. That's why. That's why. And see, these people, brethren, who are like, I'm not against God. They're against the God of the Scriptures, but they're not against the little G-God of this world, dear brethren. They're not against the God of this world who is Satan. You know, and, and go to Matthew chapter 13. Go to Matthew chapter 13. Matthew chapter 13, verses 53 on to verse 58. And it came to pass that when Jesus had finished these parables, he departed thence. And when he was come into his own country, he taught them in their synagogue, insomuch that they were astonished and said, Whence hath this man this wisdom? And these mighty works, is not this the carpenter's son? Is not his mother called Mary and his brethren, James and Joseph and Shimon and Judas? Yes, he had, uh, uh, Mary had more children. Yeah. And his sisters, are they not all with us? Whence then hath this man all these things? 
and they were offended in him. But Jesus said unto them, A prophet is not without honor, save in his own country and in his, and in his own house. And he did not many mighty works there because of their unbelief. Well, I believe in Jesus. Well, what Jesus do you believe in? Huh? And John chapter 7, 41 on verse 42, which we already covered, okay? Which we already covered, okay? I found that an interesting parallel. How David, unbeknownst to Nabal, took care of his stuff. You lost people. You have today. You have been given life today. You have it because the Lord has allowed it. And then the Lord, who wants to have a relationship with you, who wants to save you from hell. But see, in order for him to do that, you have to be broken of that self-righteousness of yours. You have to take responsibility and accountability for you putting him on the cross because of your sin. And you can't blame anyone else but yourself. And you better fear him. Because if he don't save you, he's going to send you to hell. Because you chose hell over him. Okay? And just like Nabal, just like Nabal, who's David? Who is the son of Jesse? Many people rise up against their masters. Mark chapter 2. We're almost done. We're almost done. Mark chapter 2. <laughs> if it isn't obvious to you that this isn't being done in man's wisdom, I feel sorry for you. Mark chapter 2, verses 15 on to verse 17. And it came to pass that as Jesus sat at meat in his house, many publicans, not as in his own house, he went to someone else's house. Um, and it came to pass that as Jesus sat at meat in his house, many publicans and sinners sat also together with Jesus and his disciples. For there were many, and they followed him. And when the scribes and Pharisees saw him eat with publicans and sinners, they said unto his disciples, How is it that he eateth and drinketh with publicans and sinners? And Jesus, when Jesus heard it, he saith unto them, They that are whole have no need of the physician, but they that are sick. I, I'm, not against, I'm not against God, but... I, I just don't want to I just don't want to do it the way you're telling me the way the scriptures tell me I want to go my own way along comes the devil easy believism heretic hey don't worry about it don't repentance that, that, don't worry about that that's going from unbelief you believe right well yeah okay you're saved don't worry about it so there's what about a new creature don't no don't worry about it you're you're eternally secure once say don't worry you you probably shouldn't do that thing but don't worry about it because you just believe. Easy believism keeps people in their sickness. And what is this? What does our Lord say? They that are whole have no need of the physician. Elon Musk, Jordan Peterson, Ben Shapiro, those who save themselves by their own belief, or those who say, who can utter something, think they're saved. They that are whole have no need of the physician, but they that are sick. I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. That righteous he's referring to are the self-righteous. And Luke chapter 7, which we, are, which we already kind of out of order address. Luke chapter 7, verses 36. Well, uh, I'm talking about the woman, um, you know, crying at Jesus' feet. Let's pick up at uh, verse 40, where we left off. And Jesus answering said unto him, Shimon, I have someone to say unto thee. And he saith, Master, say on. There was a certain creditor which had two debtors. The one owed 500 pence and the other 50. And when they had nothing to pay, he frankly forgave them both. Tell me, therefore, which of them will love him most? Shimon answered and said, I suppose that he to whom he forgave most. And he said unto, them, unto him, Thou hast rightly judged. And he turned to the woman and said unto Shimon, Seest thou this woman? I entered into thine house. Thou gavest me no water for my feet, but she hath washed my feet with tears and wiped them with the hairs of her head. Thou gavest me no kiss, but thou woman, 
But this woman, since the time I came in, hath not ceased to kiss my feet. My head with oil thou didst not anoint, but this woman hath anointed my feet with ointment. Wherefore I say unto thee, her sins, which are many, are forgiven, for she loved much. But to whom little is forgiven, the same loveth little. And he saith unto her, Thy sins are forgiven. And they that sat at meat with him began to say within themselves, Who is this man that forgiveth sins also? And he said unto the woman, Thy faith has saved thee. Go in peace. Right there. Who is this that all who forgiveth sins also? As it says in verse 39, Now when the Pharisee which had been him saw it, he spake within himself, saying, This man, if he were a prophet, would have known who and what manner of woman this is that toucheth him, for he, she is a sinner. And he has not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. I'm not against God. But what they are against is the God of the scriptures, who requires brokenness, contrition, and godly fear. That's what they're against. They see a genie in a bottle when they look at Jesus. But they don't see God. Most, a lot of them are deluded because of what they have heard from Christianity and that stupid trinity. First Timothy chapter 1, verse 15. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came in the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. And to close this off, John 9, verses 40 on to verse 41. And some of the Pharisees which were with him heard these words and said unto him, Are we blind also? <laughs> Jesus said unto them, if ye were blind, ye should have no sin. But now ye say, we see, therefore your sin remaineth. <laughs> and what did Satan say unto Eve in the Garden of Eden in Genesis chapter 3? Hmm? Genesis chapter 3. Genesis chapter 3. <laughs> For, uh, verse 5, uh, verse 4. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. Verse 5. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Guys like Elon Musk, Jordan Peterson, Ben Shapiro, easy believism heretics. They avoid brokenness. They avoid taking personal accountability and responsibility for their actions, that they put Christ on the cross because of their sins. So I'm not against God. Yes, you are. You're against the God of the scriptures. The God you're not against is the God that itches and tickles your ears telling you smooth things, i.e. the God of this world, Satan. That's the God you're not against. But the God of the scriptures, you are against. Because the God of the scripture requires brokenness, contrition, and fear of the Lord. But the God of easy believism just requires belief. And any fool So that is going to be it for this video. Um, I hope this, I'm sorry for some of it being <laughs> cracked out of tune. I mean, come on, it, you you see any of these videos, you gotta, come on. Even even my, my enemies, it's like, yeah, the wisdom of men is not in that guy. <laughs> even my enemies would say that. Yeah, sorry. But um, be aware of this stuff, brethren. 
Be aware of this. These people who say, I'm not against God, they are, in fact are. But the God that they are not against is the God that is being presented to them by the devil himself, which is the devil himself. So, thank you for watching this video. If you do, I hope this uh, might help some of you answer some questions. Um, thank you. Thank you. And thank you to those of you who pray for us, who help us. Thank you so very, very much for all that you do and have done for us. Praise the Lord for all of you. Praise the Lord for your prayers. Thank you, brethren. We love you. I'm going to get this video uploaded. Thank you for watching this. If you do, we love you, and we will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.